leave Michael Pack on the schedule again. After action reviews. After action reviews. Yeah. Um, so. You've seen this slide before. Uh, I was trying to tell you about all the different types of data that we pull into RITUS. Um, we pull in a lot more data than just probes and uh, uh, sensors and um, incident data. We also are pulling in things even like um, uh, police, fire, rescue, and air traffic control communications. So pretty much any radio system in the country we're connected to it in some way, and we're pulling out the live audio from that, and we're working to archive that as well. And there's tons of other data that we're, we're um, uh, sucking in. And then because we have all this data, and because we archive, we've got lots of different what we call look-back tools uh, that we have available. Some of them help you look at safety data, some look at weather data, congestion, and so on and so forth. Well. Um, this data is great, uh, but it's only useful if we can provide applications that make it easily accessible to all of our different end users and applications. Uh, so we've been working with um, the Maryland State Highway Administration and other agencies to provide the capability to use all of these analytics tools to facilitate after action reviews of incidents. And we actually have a Maryland State Highway Administration representative back in a row, Jason Decembre. Hello, Jason. Um, so he will correct me if I say anything wrong. Don't correct me. Um, uh, but uh, with their new director of CHART, that's their uh, uh, operations program, They've gotten really into performing after action reviews. Anytime there's a big incident, um, they will get together different players that uh, you know, helped respond to that incident and they'll have a discussion. What did we do well? What could we have done better? Um, what are the lessons learned from that? And they are starting to use the tools that we've put into uh, RITUS uh, to facilitate those after action reviews. And I wanted to show you today how in about 30 minutes, you can go in and produce some pretty powerful visualizations that help facilitate these after action reviews. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna show you a couple of real incidents, uh, at least, two, well, both of them were used for after action reviews. The first one was a fatality incident on I-70. I-70's, you know, kind of in rural Maryland. I mean, it's not, it's not D.C. Um, it's out near uh, Howard County Fairgrounds. There was a bad incident out here that occurred October 29th, 2016. The incident happened at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, a car hit a deer. Then a tractor trailer truck hit the car and jackknife, and then there was a, a fatality that resulted. All lanes were closed in the westbound direction for over seven hours, and then it took a total of 11 hours to fully clear the incident and reopen all the lanes. Uh, and while this is a major in, uh, interstate here, there are some arterials that you can get on and actually detour around. So there, there are some ways to get people around this. Again, Jason, speak up if I say anything wrong. Uh, so what State Highway was able to do was go in and use uh, these different tools within the RITUS platform to go in and figure out what happened uh, for this incident. Uh, the first thing they did is they used something called our event query tool, which lets them go in, search for a day and a time, and find all of the incidents that occurred within that, that date range and time. They locate the particular incident, and then they can generate something called a timeline graphic that uh, shows them how essentially they responded to the incident. So here's a, a high level overview of the timeline. This is interactive, so you can put your mouse over it and get different little pop-ups. Uh, it's essentially the red line is the start of the incident, and then 11 hours later, this is the end of the incident um, uh, out here, the green line. Blips and lines are things that happen, and they align themselves with the time at which they occurred. So up top you have these communication logs. These are 
operators uh, in the traffic management system typing in things that are occurring. Then down here you have uh, different agencies that were notified about the uh, incident and then when they responded. You have the lane status, you have which variable message signs were used, then you have the, the queue measurements from the, the probe data. So zooming in a little bit, the communication logs uh, allow you to see all the information that the operations personnel were typing in, so you can kind of see the flow of information, what was coming into the operations center, what they were becoming aware of, assuming they were doing a, a good job of logging everything, and they, they do for the, the big incidents. Now, so you can kind of read this and see what was happening. Each one of these diamonds represents one of these, and if you put your mouse over one of the diamonds, it tells you exactly which message was, was typed out. If we scroll down a little bit more, then we have all the responders and uh, what, was, what was when they were notified. So a diamond represents when the agency was notified. The dashed line is when it was driving to the scene. The solid line is when it was actually on the scene and doing something. So you know, what's interesting here is you can see the fire departments came really, really quickly. The state police came pretty quickly. Uh, the State Highway Administration got their aeroboard trucks and some of their other responders out there quickly as well. Uh, Hazmat had to come to the scene. They got there quickly. A medical examiner came relatively quickly. Um, and you can see it took a while to get the, the tow trucks and there were you know, three different tow trucks that, that came out. And then below that, you have the lane status. So you can see all of the lanes were blocked until about 11.30 a.m. And then they opened up one lane for a number of hours, then they opened up a middle lane, and then you know, the incident cleared and they opened up everything. And down at the very bottom, this is the location of the incident, and that is uh, five, 10, so on miles behind. Anytime there's red, that's the queue that's backing up be behind the incident. So this kind of shows them a picture of what happened during the incident. Then they can generate heat maps uh, within the tool that show them for you know, whatever date range they chose here, uh, shows them where most of the collisions are likely to have. So was this location, is this a high incident location or is this an abnormal event that occurred? Then they can go in and they use something called the region explorer in our probe data analytics that helps them to figure out where the choke points of traffic were during the incident and helps you know, look at where they maybe should be doing detours. Uh, so the blue dots are essentially choke points during this incident and however far back the blue line goes, that's how big the queue was during the incident. And you can see people started to detour around uh, using these other roads. So you start seeing queues on roads that you normally wouldn't see any sort of queues on. Then we have something called the trend map that allows you to go in and generate historic maps that show you what the speeds were like on the roads at any point in time and this thing is animated so you can hit the play button and it's like a movie it just plays through anywhere from one minute intervals to hour intervals and it updates the map and animates and you can see how the cues grew and grew and shrank uh, then we have uh, the congestion scan graphic that allows you to go in and select the road. This is I-70 right here, and these green signs are the intersections along the way. Then we chose the day of the incident, October 29th, and it shows you where the, uh, the queues were during the, the incident. There is the incident and the length of time it took to clear it. And then we chose another date. This is like the prior Saturday. And you can see there's generally no congestion on this roadway on the Saturday, but there was a lot during this big, uh, big incident. And then we went in further and we used something called our use the delay cost tool. And this helps you go in and figure out how expensive this collision was in terms of use the delay costs, not in terms of the man hours required to clean it up or you know, loss of life and excess fuel consumption, all that sort of stuff, literally just the value of time. So we went in and we chose the roads that were affected including the um, uh, detour routes. We assigned uh, a value of time, the average value of time to passenger vehicles and commercial vehicles. And then the tool spits out a table that tells you by hour of day, by day of week, how much user delay cost there is on this roadway. 
So we see on normal Saturdays, this road might have around $6,000 of user delay cost, all these roads combined. Whereas in this one Saturday when we had this fatal incident, that user delay cost went up to $76,000. Saturday, fairly rural road, it's not a ton of money, but it's still real money. And understanding how much money is being expended just in user delay cost, that starts to get people thinking, your fire departments, your towing recovery, your politicians, okay, now I get it. This is more you know, than just people spending a few extra minutes on the roadway. This is, this is quantifiable in terms of, of dollars and it becomes uh, a reality to a lot of folks. So we've done the same thing uh, in I-85 in Atlanta for their bridge collapse they had. Anyone, anyone hear about this? Big news, right? So um, this major interstate highway that travels right through the heart of Atlanta, carries around 250,000 uh, vehicles per day, um, and you know a very big road. So on Thursday, March 30th, a fire started underneath a viaduct about six miles north of downtown. There's a picture of the fire right there. The bridge then collapsed at about 7 p.m. that evening and all five lanes of the highway in each direction were subsequently blocked and closed. This was a big deal. So again, we used these tools to go and try to quantify the impact of this, uh, this incident and this closure. Uh, so we used the trend map, the use of delay cost analytics. Uh, here using the trend map, we're able to show you what Wednesday's traffic was like before the incident. So this is your normal, uh, normal congestion at 11.45 p.m. in the evening. On Thursday, the day of the collapse, at 11.45 p.m., this is what your congestion looked like. There's the incident right there. You can see all of the surrounding roads are heavily congested. People are having to detour all over the place. And then, I'm sorry, not 11.45, 8 p.m. And then um, Friday, the day after the incident, at the same time, you still have more congestion than you would have normally had at this location uh, on the arterial. As you can see, there's no data coming in uh, on the road where the collapse occurred because you know there's no cars out there. Um, yes, so then we went in and we used the user delay cost analysis tool to look at the entire month of March uh, on the roads surrounding Atlanta. And what we saw is on a normal day, you might have around $7 million of user delay cost, or I'm sorry, about $5 million. But on, during the day of the bridge collapse, this went up to about $7 million. So you had about a 20% you know, increase. And on Friday, the day after, you had the same excessive user delay cost, and uh, that user delay cost started two to three hours sooner than it would normally start. So things were just generally bad. Um, so these tools are now being used on a daily basis by a good number of DOTs to try to produce these types of reports in just you know, 30 minutes and then really starting to uh, create a dialogue between the different responder communities and with politicians as well. Now you can go to your politicians and say, listen, we don't have the right type of quick clearance policies in our state, or we don't have uh, a, a, the right type of towing policies, towing recovery policies in our state. And because we don't have the right type of towing policy state, we're losing millions of dollars every day just on this one little road. Let's rethink how we, how we do business in the state. We're starting to see some real impacts. Um, that's all I've got. Thank you.